Hi, and welcome back to another episode of the Canary Room. Uh, real treat for you today. Um, and uh, we're off to uh, off to the northeast. We're, we're off to see the uh, the red poles of Kenny Masterman. Um, really enjoyed putting the edit together for this. I, I, I must say a huge thank you to Kenny uh, for accommodating me uh, and also for uh, a lovely pair of red poles um, that I was able to to pick up from Kenny while I was there. So there'll be uh, future stars all being well of the uh, red pole diaries. Um, while I'm thanking people, thanks for everybody who's donated to the channel over over the last few weeks, uh, to Beethoven Dellison, uh, to Stuart Roberts, to John Dowling and of course to Michael Burling. Gents, thanks very much for all of your support. Uh, your support has helped uh, go towards some of the costs that I incur when I'm doing these on the road episodes as, as well as putting the show together. So we've got a couple of more on the roads coming up in the next few uh, weeks here in the Canary Room. Uh, they're already filmed. I'm in the middle of editing them at the moment. And um, we've got a couple more planned all being well. Um, Many questions after our trip to Gerald Spencer, which uh, everybody seemed to enjoy, uh, was, did the fawn hen come home with you? And the answer is, she did indeed, Gerald, true to his word. Uh, I'm delighted to say that the bird is uh, safely housed in the Canary Room. And when we come back into the Canary Room in a few episodes' time, um, we will see her and hopefully she'll be in new surroundings. So the work to uh, transform the canary room, uh, replacing 60 cages and replacing the flight cages as well is well underway. Um, we hope to have those in, uh, in situ, uh, certainly in the next three to four weeks or so. Um, as I say, we've got another couple of on the roads uh, been lined up and uh, travel restrictions permitting. I'm looking forward to, to, to seeing those individuals and, uh, and bringing you some of their stories as well. So um, thanks everyone for your support. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit subscribe, hit the notification button. We come out with fortnightly shows at 9am in the UK on a Sunday. Um, so if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button now. If you're able to, to support us, it's really, really appreciated. The donate button is on the homepage of our YouTube. So donations, big or small, very much welcome and very, very gratefully received. Grab yourself a cuppa, everyone. Sit back and, as always, enjoy the show. It is a, uh, a beautiful autumnal morning. Uh, we are in the car again. It can mean only one thing. We're going back on the road. And today, uh, it's a first for me. Uh, we're visiting the bird room of Kenny Masterman. And uh, we're gonna pick up a couple of red poles while we're there. Uh, Kenny keeps uh, and breeds some stunning mutation red poles. I understand he's got siskins as well and a few other uh, native uh, and British finches. So looking forward to it, really looking forward to seeing Kenny. Um, met him for the first time uh, at Stafford last year. Uh, I've, I've been aware of him, certainly the name for some time. He, he did keep fifes at one time. So we'll find out a little bit more about uh, Kenny's foray into fifes and how he got interested in um, Red Poles. So, buckle up. I've got a couple of hours drive ahead of me, I think, and I will see you when we arrive at Kenny's. Well, 
Welcome everybody to uh, episode 18, I think, of the Canary Room. It's um, it's a trip to the northeast to see this gentleman here, um, who not only breeds uh, incredible red poles, but as we can see from some of the footage, has the most stunning garden I've ever seen. The garden itself is immaculate, uh, as is Kenny's bird room, uh, and as are his birds. So, Kenny, welcome to your shed. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to your shed and welcome to the Canary Room. Uh, it, it was one of those things. I, I, I've, I've come today to um, to pick up a couple of poles from Kenny, uh, and I also said to him, "Do you mind if we film an episode of the show while you're there?" And 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 he was very kindly agreed. Uh, and you are in for a real treat today because um, the, the room is immaculate, the birds are immaculate. So Kenny, um, beautiful red poles. They are. I mean, they are absolutely stunning, mate. But they're not. Not the first birds you ever kept. You're a you're a, a proper stockman from rabbits when you were a kid. Yeah, to... it started very early. Yes, yes, we had rabbits and uh, oh, a whole host of things. But um, cage birds, I think I'm probably about 11, 12 year old, and my dad had a shed out the back garden, and uh, we managed to get a cage or two in there. <laughs> until it got to the point where I think uh, he said somewhere along the lines of. Um, well, you may as well just take the whole shed. <laughs> so we did. That's myself and my brother. <laughs> so so we had, we had the shed lined up with cages. We had Avery's out on the front, extensions. And uh, we had a whole host of things, really. Budgies and uh, finches, anything, really. Just um, just keeping animals. It's just something we've always done, you know, and just enjoyed. Um, so we had them and... Uh, then of course you you get a bit older and you start working and uh, you get married and and that also and your life ends. And yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> birds have gone and what's worth living for? <laughs> but <laughs> but then we moved here uh, just over twenty years ago and uh, we had our daughter and then uh, when she was about three year old. Um, it was my brother's fault because he had uh, Avery in the back garden and they used to go around and ask me, and I got the bug again. So me and my daughter uh, built a little, where the greenhouse is now, we built a little flight with a, a shelter on the end and that was going to be just for a pair of birds and, you know, just something for the garden. So that's, that, that happened and I think it was a pair of kakarikis, I think. Um, and then uh, uh, oh, it'd be nice to breed something. <laughs> <laughs> So um, we need a bigger shed. So yeah, we need a bigger shed. So uh, a year or two went on, and uh, and then we put a shed in the top corner. I thought it'd be nice and out the way. Twelve by eight, and uh, and I got into uh, I got some five canaries and uh, lovely little birds, and I was nothing on show standard. Just really uh, colours, you know, getting the whites, the blues, the fawns and cinnamons and it was just good fun seeing what different colours you could breed and, and uh, had them and then um, I was asked by the, one of the local clubs um, there were, I knew a few lads in there and they were wanting uh, more members and they said, well what, you keep birds why don't you come along and so obviously uh, um, my birds were up to standard for that so I uh, I uh, got some better birds and I started showing and uh, built me stood the fives up and uh, showed them for about uh, maybe 12 years, something like that. And then, uh, um, but the trouble was when I went to CBS shows, I was drawn by the British as well. <laughs> um, something that happens to all of us, Kenny. We see the British in the yeah, cages and we think, a, I'd like those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I didn't do anything about it for a while and then... Uh, uh, someone said, well, why don't you walk now unless you give it a go? So a pair came, well, two pair. So would be one pair. I lost the hen to before the breeding season. But the, the, the next pair, I think they were a pair of cinnamons. Um, first year with them, bred 14 young. The man's got the touch. I think I think we'll be we'll be relocating the Red Pole Diaries to Kenny's shed. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the first round five young, she reared them no problem. The cock didn't help. Uh, second round another five, and then she'd had a four. And and she laid another round, believe it or not. And the cock had hardly any feathers left on him. He was in the mud. <laughs> and I thought I'm going to stop these. So I stopped him, and I thought. Well, that was easy. <laughs> <laughs> Following year, three pair. 
I think I've got eight young. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, they're, and they're the British bite back. Yeah. Maybe not so easy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, and, 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 so I sort of I carried on with those and, uh, and I still had the face. But um, yeah, they got a hold of me, to be honest, uh, especially the Red Paws, just what they were, just great little characters. That's what I think them of as characters. And, 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 and uh, gradually the fives went. More red poles came, and I also had some mutation siskins as well, which are beautiful birds. And um, but it was getting to the point where um, I just wanted to uh, keep more red poles. Well, uh, uh, you thought uh, you plan ahead, and you think, well, it's no good just three or four pairs because you, you end up getting close and what have you. So um, the siskins went eventually, and it was mostly just red poles, um, and they were never going to be shown. But again. Clubs are saying, well, have you any birds now? Well, yeah, a few. Bri oh, British are low, low on numbers. <laughs> so that started, it started all over again. Like, and uh, um, but I think I think it must be a bit competitive because there's a standard there that I'm always I'm never happy, uh, you know, and, and I'm always wanting to improve. But uh, um, I just I enjoy keeping them, and, and that's the main thing. It was something I was told. A long time ago, you know, it's no good just chasing um, prizes and things like that. It's, it's just uh, the main aim is to enjoy what you're doing and keep the birds that you like. Um, and so, yeah, I love them. I do. And uh, it's sort of resulted in this now. <laughs> indeed, indeed it has. <clears throat> so, Kenny, one of the things that, um, uh, you know, when I, when I sort of come into your, your room, I have... I have room envy. Um, you've got some absolutely stunning cages here. Um, t tell us, tell us about those. Where, where did you pick those up from? What type of cages they are? Yeah, well, these are uh, the Gihu cages made in Holland. Um, there's a lad called Mick who's an agent for them, and uh, I'd seen his stands at the, some of the shows, and, and I just thought they were they were perfect for what for these little red poles because my cages at the time were the wooden uh, five, you know, what I bred the five. They were yeah. only 12 inch deep, and they, they, they just weren't, you know, I could open them up for long runs, but I just didn't feel too happy with them, and so. I bit the bullet and I bought this block here, which is, um, there's like six doubles there, but um, the 50 centimetres high, but the lower ones, I don't like low cages for some reason, but I thought them are 80 centimetres, so they've got plenty of light coming in for lower cages. Um, so I, I sort of did that set up and got that and had them a year or so and, I, and they just work well. Um, you know, there's wire dividers if you want to separate the cot bird off. Um, you know, there's an extra door there, you can put another, another I use external uh, nest pans, uh, little nest ba baskets. And uh, so we got that one and then um, another year I went later and I, and I gave Mick another rung, ring up and, and, and I got that block, uh, which is more or less the same, but, but they're slightly short. They're, these are 123 wide, they're 103 wide, so it, it doesn't make a lot of difference. Um, and then a year later, I bought these um, purely t t if I needed to single off any birds for showing, or you know, um, and which which you know they're nice and they're easy wipe down and, and, and good deep draws. And, uh, and no, I thought I thought they were they were what I, so yeah. I've got them and I'm, I'm happy with them. Yeah. In in incredibly, incredibly smart cages. And, and you mentioned before that you've got. Um, in terms of your poles, you put in um, your sort of twelve breeding cages in yes, essence. Yes. So you're putting twelve pairs yes. together each yes. year, and yes. and and there is, I mean, you know, one of the things that Kenny's done incredibly well, which uh, I'd like to say I haven't, is Kenny's got a, you know a tremendous amount of space, um, certainly behind camera. Uh, I think this, you said it started off as a twelve by six shed, and it's it's, it's had a couple of extensions along the way. Yeah, it's a take wide. It was eight foot wide and twelve foot long, and then um, uh, put another six foot on, and then another six foot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he hasn't told the people who live behind him that he's taken half of their garden up. <laughs> I think you're going up over now. <laughs> yeah. Yes, a double story, a double story setup. Yeah. Uh, and in terms of the breeding pairs, I noticed that you've got um, you've got a couple of razors in as well, and that's yes, uh, un unintentional. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I missed the Canary song. 
and um, and these little rats. I've always liked small birds for some. I don't know why, but there's something about small birds that just uh, it just you know. And then so this little pair of razors and uh, I bet half a dozen young of them. Um, but I'm definitely not going to start showing Rasses. <laughs> he says now, everybody. He says now. We'll we'll be back to see Kenny in a couple of years. Kenny Kenny Masterman, the Razza breeder. The <laughs> So Kenny, uh, w one of the things when I, when I first walked into the garden, I was I was I think I said, "Wow, this is an amazing garden." And then when I first walked into the, the shed, as, as well as the um, you know the, the quality of the setup uh, and the cages, and, and most importantly the birds, um, I was. Uh, uh, very, very quickly greeted by the smell of meadow sweet, which, um, which, which, which is beautiful and and fills the room. And and you, you mentioned earlier that you in the job you do, you found a, a reliable source of meadow sweet, which is which I don't expect you to disclose the location <laughs> of because, you know, I, I know it, it's hard to hard to find. But the um, the natural the natural food you think is important for the birds? Very much so, um, particularly with the British. Um, um, uh, I start off with dandelions and uh, that sort of predicts when the birds go down, I find, you know, a uh, fortnight on dandelions, particularly the heads where there's a seed in, you just get them right and I usually cut the fluff off uh, before they open up. And, and, and you give them a few of them each day and, and, and it just alters them so much, it really does. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's certainly nature at its best. Um, so start off with them and get them going and then you know there's, there's things like seeding dock um, and then the mugwort comes out and and, and, uh, and this like you say the meadow sweet which is like sort of malting time and, and, it, and it, it does I think it does help definitely plus um, one of the key benefits I think it, it keeps them busy and active you know otherwise they're just ripping paper up and, and what have you um, but it, it's just a natural thing for them and and you know and happy birds are healthy birds i always think you know and, and that's one of the key things for me is that my birds above anything else is that they're happy and healthy and, and you know not overcrowded and and, and you know just and, and just thriving and, that, and that's the main thing for me and and your seed mix which you, you've got i noticed you've got some berries as well in some of the cages yes uh, there's a few power of can for berries that are ready now and the, they love them they all they all seem to take to them uh, i've tried them with rowan berries but they don't seem interested at all in them but they love the power of can for berries uh my seed mix um i usually use either a, a mixed canary uh, and I had, I had like a siskin mix, uh, which is more grass seed and stuff like that. Um, or uh, at the moment, I'm using like a basic British finch mix and, and, and like a siskin mix. Um, it's quite rich. Um, and, and I also give them quite a few treat seeds, um, larch and uh, chia and, you know, a little finger dry every now and then. Because I just think that they'll benefit from something, you know, what, what something else might be lacking. And... You know, uh, maybe it sounds like I spoil them a bit, but... Uh, I'm coming back in the next life as one of Kenny's <laughs> red poles. But, um, yeah, and, and you know, y y you find out what, what works for you, I think. And, and, you know, obviously birds in flights, you can give them anything you like and they'll burn it off. Um, our breeding cages, I mean, the, I do put them into bigger flights uh, over the winter, and you know, to get them fit and, and keep the weight off them. But um, then I bring them into the cages and obviously you have to be careful you know um, and so you, you adjust your mix just accordingly but they're on a rich mix over the malt because it takes a lot of energy out of them I believe you know um, I don't uh, I don't use any medication or anything um, what I did uh, I did I did with the fives and uh, I sort of continued with them as um, because I don't know much about medication, but they say, well, you have to give a good probiotic afterwards. So I thought, well, I'll just keep the good, the good, uh, good guts on them, and, and 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 so I give them two days probiotic, uh, and and sort of towards the breeding season, throughout the breeding season, two days of calcium. Um, and I, I sort of carried on with that. But speaking to one of the the reps at um, one of the big shows there, he, uh, I was getting the stuff, and he said, well, why don't you use the all in one? It's got everything in, and um, and I said, well, I said, I said, I found uh, the calcium very good. Uh, I wouldn't be without that. And I said, you know, and I keep the probiotic. Obviously, it's one of them things you don't know if it's worked until you stop using it. Yeah, yeah. 
So he said, oh, it's, it's got everything in and, you, you know, so uh, I've tried him on it this year and it seems OK, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, uh, it's just... Uh, trying to keep on top of you know keep them keep them right really um so I know. Well, well they look they look in uh, in 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 fine fettle um as i say i'm i'm, I'm gonna come back and live in one of these cages i think and and, and i'll let kenny feed me uh which you, let's be honest it's gonna cost him a small fortune <laughs> So, Kenny, when it comes to uh, to putting your pairs together, um, and you know we're, we're having a look here at your some of your normal red poles, um, which uh, you know beautiful short sort of cobby birds. Um, what what are you looking for when you're developing your your line of red poles? What what are the key things for you? Well, it's like you say, it's it's, it's getting that um, the type right, as they call it, and a nice I like a nice short cobby bird, filled well filled in at the front. Um, nice and active and then obviously then you start with markings you know you want the nice flank markings try and get three or four nice clean stripes down the sides which isn't easy and then there's the colour I like a nice warm brown nutty colour um, some people like them really dark but that's not my thing but uh, I'll continue doing my own thing and you know maybe someday a judge might like the same thing and <laughs> just hit it right but but no, I just, I just, I'm not in no hurry to get it. You know, I'll probably never get it right. But um, I'm happy keeping them and, and working on them, and uh, you know, little bits and often, and try and get it there at the end. You know, but uh, I think that's the thing, Kenny, isn't it? I mean, we, we talked off camera before about the, um, you know, the, the sort of the, the patience required in bird keeping, yeah, and, yeah, and it, you know, it's not just the pairs for this season; it's the pairs to build the line yes, to, yes. to build the. The, the birds that you are looking for maybe in, in future years and you yes. you mentioned earlier about the the pairings you've done this year with your um with your, your mutation birds with with a cobalt and a cinnamon um to do that to, to try and breed something yes moving forward yeah yeah you've got to plan ahead all the time you know i, I don't often plan for that year it's always what you know what, what I'll breed off them and then what that'll go to as well, you know. And this year I, I bred some split um, pides. I didn't bring many pides, but I bred some split pides um, using a, a normal cock and a, a cinnamon cock. Uh, so that's given me a new line to go to. And also the birds that I used were the type that I liked. And so if I can get that in the mutation birds as well, you know, because some people, they focus on colour and nothing else, but, you know, um, I want to get the same sort of type uh, in them as well. So, yeah, you've got to plan ahead. I mean, I've seen so many guys who, you know, they start up and they'll go to a champion breeder and uh, they'll buy birds and they'll, they'll want to be on the top table within two years. And if they don't, they're, they're like fed up and, you know, they're not willing to put the, the work in. And it's, uh, but you have to do and, and but you have to enjoy doing it as well. And, and that's the thing, if, you know, if I never get there, it doesn't matter because, you know, I just love keeping these. Um, so it's just, but if you, if you breed a nice and it's, it's nice. And, uh, and, and if you get a stud going, uh, you know, where, where not just one bird, but if you're getting families going, then, you know, you're getting somewhere you know, somewhere there. So, yeah, it's uh, it's all it's all work, but uh, it's enjoyable. But but, f but fun work. Absolutely. Fun work. This is the, this is what we have to tell ourselves. It's yeah. fun. We're having fun. Yes. But <laughs> the walk seat and the walk feed and the walk. <laughs> yeah. That's fun, Kenny. That's fun. Yeah. As my wife will say to me, she says, I don't know why you keep, I don't know if your wife says the same, I don't oh. know why you keep birds, because you don't seem to get any enjoyment, they seem to bring you heartache. And we're beyond that stage now, she says, I've heard it all before, I don't want to know. <laughs> you have the same every year, and then you get it sorted out, and you're on, and then you're coming in, oh, look at these. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't get no sympathy at all. <laughs> we're all the same, neither do I. So, Kenny, um, again, you know, the, the, the sort of beautiful smell of, uh, of meadow sweet in the room, but actually a real 
freshness in the air and um, you know obviously there's, there's there's a window open but yes. but ventilation as well extraction in here as well to keep the air clean yeah there's an extractor fan there as well because um you know i found this year during the month i've got a bit chesty myself actually you know feeling it and so um there's also a door in the wind uh, a window in the door which takes this out as well so um, it's, it's the worst thing in the world for a bird is a draft and you know these birds here i have a wire door as well but in nice days and that's open as well and get good airflow through um, but uh, they obviously they don't want to draft so I can just take the window out if I, if I want and so the bo you know it's not low down and then there's two windows there that get open all the time and uh, yeah you've got to do but um, I also use this uh, I have a, a mister bottle here and, I, and, I, and as soon as I come in I spray it and it just brings any dust and that's particularly through the malt and uh, um, I've added a bit of olive soil just to make it minty fresh as well <laughs> I can, you, you can't smell the minty freshness but i can i'm feeling minty fresh minty fresh thanks kenny and then um, and and before so uh, be, before we go today uh, and and before we go i've got uh, I, i've got another couple of questions for you but one um you know red poles dominate this room and the red poles are stunning but they are not the only inhabitants we've seen um some of the razors um, there are other inhabitants here, and, and you can may see a, a wry smile breaking out over Kenny's face. So, Kenny, um, there is. Um, well, which, which ones do you want to talk about first? Do you, do you want to talk about the Himalayan greenfinches or the parrotlets, or neither? Parrotlets. <laughs> no, there's no parrotlets. Right <laughs> so I walked in in one of the bottom cages. There is a pair of parrotlets, and it, and it seems that that Kenny's daughter has. Um, has essentially got the better of Kenny's good nature. I don't mean that. I believe she's an absolute... It's valuable breeding cage, is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Kenny, you've got some parrotlets, or your yes. daughter's got yes, some parrotlets. Daughter, so, yes, yes. so in, the, in the same way that your brother and you took over your father's shed, is this... I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, she, uh, well, she was sent home from uni this year because of, because of, what, of what's going on. And uh, she 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 looked after the birds, you know, egg food is on the lunchtime for me and everything. And she's very really good. And she she actually wants, you know, she used to show as a junior herself, showed border canaries and did well. But um, she does take an interest in the birds, and she's very really good with them. And uh, she did something that I've never done and never wanted to do. And she actually unreared two young red poles. Um, it was against my judgment, to be honest, but. Apparently I'm a cruel man, and, <laughs> and she she reared them, and, and, and she she was brilliant with them, and that, and and um, and then it got her on wanting her own two birds again, and she loves these things here, so uh, I relented, and and she's got them, and she's she's wanting to breed them, and uh, hand reared the young. So that's the parrotlet. So we've basically, we've thrown, what's your, um, we'll give you your daughter a name check. What's that's her name? Emily. Yes. Emily. So Emily, yeah. you've thrown Emily under the, the, the yeah, proverbial yeah. bus. So uh, whose fault is it for the Himalayan greenfinches, oh, Kenny? Well, that's just temptation, <laughs> that is. <laughs> I don't think I could just keep one type of bird. It's just, I think we're all alike. But um, yeah, we, uh, I go on a trip to the Golden Ring Show. That's my holiday uh, with a bunch of lads. And uh, we went into a place and, and, and I'd only seen a few few in the flesh but um, seen them in boots and for some reason they struck a card with me and I walked in there and I was about three pair you see when I went to one of the, the bird shops and uh, and I came out with a pair <laughs> knowing nothing about them and uh, and I brought them home and put them in a the flight there and uh, we actually went down in May and uh, and they reared one young which is in the cage there and and then they went into a full mould and I thought, oh, well, that's no, there's going to be no second round then. Um, and then they went through the malt and then she started carrying again. And she actually went down and, and laid four eggs and sat them, but they weren't fertile. I think she went a bit before the cockbird was f fully out of the malt. But um, um, she's actually wanting to go down now, but it hasn't worked out so good because I want to get these, li well, the lights are actually off now. Um, you know, for these birds, it's not good because uh, there's no shows this year. So these are just going to get put into flights now and, and, and just let them do their own thing and have a rest. So, um, but uh, I've had some encouraging news from a guy who was here the other day and he said that uh, he had a friend who bred them and they went down in February before the, the normal native greenies. So 
um, I'm banking on that just to give it another go but um, I do just stunning birds and who can resist a stunning bird absolutely who indeed so parrotlets you heard it here first everyone Kenny Masterman the red pole man with parrotlets as well <laughs> right Kenny as we bring today's episode for uh, for a close um, I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have I, I, I kind of um, you know, I, I get to spend a, a couple of hours here and, and unfortunately you'll probably only see about half an hour of that. Um, Kenny, before we go, your your top three pieces of advice for, for somebody, you know, think, thinking about keeping red poles, uh -huh. what would they be? Uh, probably don't do it. <laughs> get a life instead. <laughs> advice number one, sage advice from Kenny. <laughs> I think all I can really say is, um, you know, find some stuff stock stock that you like you know have a look around and just see the birds that you like and get them and make sure you do like them not 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 just chasing the current trend and that because every day you have to come in and feed them so so do that and and, and also like have an aim where you where you'd like to get the birds to be you know um and, and don't be prepared to, be prepared to put the work into them and you know and get them there um that's that's the main thing really and just enjoy them on the way you know um the lovely birds to keep active birds and I just think of them as proper little characters you know and, and that's what they are and uh, they certainly got older me but uh, yeah just um, just don't be disheartened if you know if you have, you have, we all have bad years I didn't have a great year this year but uh, just just carry on and, and, and enjoy them and, and on that note we know all about the Red Pole Diaries we know the heartache it brings us Kenny it's been an absolute pleasure thank you very much thank indeed you, for your, for your uh, fabulous hospitality and um, our new acquisitions to the Red Pole Diaries will be in a future episode, so I'll tease those. You'll have to stay watching. Until next time, everyone, take care. <laughs>